Okay, the last page of equilibrium constants, so or of ice tables, so let's see if they've saved anything really spicy for us here. The formation of gaseous hydrogen fluoride from hydrogen and fluorine. So here's hydrogen. Here's fluorine. Those can produce hydrogen fluoride, and it'll be two moles of it. And initial change equilibrium is likely to come up. And they tell us at some temperature the equilibrium constant is 115, so we're sure to need that soon. In a particular experiment, three moles of each component were put in a one and a half liter flask. So the concentrations would all be three divided by 1.5, which is two, so we start with two of everything. They did say I thought they might have said each reactant, but they said each component, so all the things start with concentrations of 2 moles per liter. And now they want the equilibrium values. Well, we don't, we can't calculate any of the changes because we don't have an equilibrium amount. So, because we have to get a change somehow, basically, what we do is say, let's assume X amount of hydrogen reacted. Hydrogen and fluorine have the same coefficients, so the, the amount of fluorine must be the same. And hydrogen fluoride is always twice as much as these, so that would have to be a 2x. And now we can do equil equilibrium amounts. We start with 2, we used up x. That puts us here. We start with 2, we used up x. And we started with 2 and made 2x. So I'm making the standard assumption that reactants were used up while products were formed. That's why I'm putting minuses on this side, pluses on this side. If I'm wrong about that, it's no big deal. All that will happen is my x will come out negative. And that's math saying uh, the direction you were assumed here was incorrect. Let me fix that for you. And then if I put that negative x into all these positions, I'll get correct answers in the end. So there's really not even a penalty for guessing wrong. That's why we don't think too much about the assumption, and we just always do the same one. A positive x will mean math saying, yeah, you were right, we used up reactants and made products. And a negative answer would mean the opposite. This k is much greater than 1, so it probably is safe to say we're going to get more product. This, this k says that the products are fairly heavily favored. So, how do we solve this thing? Well, we can write a k expression for this, an equilibrium law and it would be hydrogen fluoride squared, because there's a 2 there, over hydrogen and fluorine. And that has to come out to 115. Now, we can put numbers into that. Or we can put not exactly numbers, but uh, values anyway. HF is 2 plus 2x. 2 plus 2x, all squared. Hydrogen is 2 minus x. Fluorine is also 2 minus x, so I'm going to just write this squared, because that's a little bit easier. Equals 115. And you remember the drill? This happens an awful lot in ice table problems. We get both things squared on the left-hand side, or on one of the sides. And the counter for that is square root the whole side. Now, if you do that in algebra, you must also square root your other side to keep things fair. And what does that give us? We're going to get 2 plus 2x, not squared anymore, because the square root and the square is cancelled. Downstairs we get 2 minus x, not squared anymore. And the square root of 115 is 10.724. Okay, if we want to solve this for x, first thing we want to do is get our denominator eliminated. We can multiply both sides by 2 minus x. On this side, that's completely good news. The 2 minus x's cancel out, leaving us with 2 plus 2x. On the right side, we get 10.724 times 2, which is 21.448, minus, and then we get 10.724 times x.
Okay, if we segregate this, we want to get all of our x's to one side, all of our numbers to the other. So the 10.724x comes over to this side. Added to the 2x we already had, we'll make 12.724x. We subtract 2 from each side, or take this 2 to the right, it becomes negative, and that takes us to 19.448. And to finish this, we divide both sides by 12.724. And we get 19.448 divided by 12.724, 1.528, or uh, Let's see. This has four significant digits, but these other numbers only have three, so our answer can only have three. So 1.53 should do it for our, our value for x. Now, that isn't the answer, but it's a big step. x is 1.53. These are the answers we want, the equilibrium concentrations. Now that we have this x, we can tear around our ice table and fill in all those missing values. 2 minus 1.53 is 0 0.47. Same thing for fluorine. And 2 plus 2x would be 2 plus 3.06 would be 5.06 for the concentration of hydrogen fluoride. And if you want to check that, you can do 5.06 squared divided by 0.47 and divided by 0.47 again, and if all goes well, that will come out to right around 115, which would confirm that we've got good concentrations. Any, any answers that we get out of here should still obey our K expression, so you can use these as a check, make sure that you get 115. Last one. Will it be extra rough or just a little bit rough? At a particular temperature, we're going to recopy this so we have more space to put stuff under it. Sulfur dioxide plus nitrogen dioxide makes sulfur trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. Initial change, equilibrium. All four gases had initial concentrations of one. And that is a concentration, so we don't have to divide it by volume. Someone already did that for us. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Well, the standard assumption is that we used up reactants and made products, and we don't know how much. So if we used x moles per liter of sulfur dioxide, all of these are 1 to 1, which means the changes are all going to be the same amount. They're all identical. And so our equilibrium amounts will be we used up reactants, we made products, so they increase, and our trusty equilibrium law says sulfur trioxide times NO over SO2 and NO2 has to come out to, where is it, 2.5. Okay, so if we plug into that, our products are both 1 plus x, so we get 1 plus x squared. Downstairs we get 1 minus x twice, and that equals 2.5. Yeah, we've seen this before, haven't we? How do you knock out those squares? You square root both sides. 1 for you, 1 for you. And what does that get us? On the top we get 1 plus x, not squared anymore. On the bottom we get 1 minus x, not squared anymore. The square root of 2 and a half is 1.581. Uh, our answer is going to have three significant digits, so I'm cutting it a little close, only carrying four through the work, but let's see if we get away with it. We can multiply both sides by 1 minus x to get that out of the denominator. Da, 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 da. The 1 minus x's cancel out. Leaves us with 1 plus x equals, this multiplies through the brackets, so we get 
1.581 minus 1.581x. If we segregate this, take all our x's to the left, 1x plus 1.5x makes 2.5x. For numbers, if I take this 1 to the right, it becomes negative. We get 0 0.581. And then we divide by 2.581. 0.581 divided by 2.581, I get x equals 0 0.225. Now, that isn't any of our answers. Our answers are 1 minus 0.225 and 1 plus 0.225. So Make sure you don't stop too early on a question like this, especially when you've already done all this work. Don't trip on the finish line. 1 minus 0.225 is 0 0.775. That's the concentration for sulfur dioxide. It's also the concentration for nitrogen dioxide. And here we get 1.225 for sulfur trioxide and for NO, nitrogen monoxide. There we go. There's all our equilibrium concentrations.